Greetings. Turn your Bibles to the second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2. We're going to start in verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the last and final Bible study on Day of the Lord versus Day of Christ. So let's get started. The Day of Christ only appears three times in the Bible. So this book right here is going to show us that it, I believe, the Day of the Lord and the Day of Christ is the same thing. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Some people say this is the rapture. This is the resurrection. I prefer the word resurrection, but when you say rapture, everybody knows what it is. So Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. As that the day of Christ is at hand. Day of Christ. Verse 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. What day? The day of Christ. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. You see, we can't be gathered together unto Christ. The day of Christ cannot happen until there come a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. I mean, think about it. Let no man deceive you by any means. Not your independent fundamentalist Baptist church preacher, nobody. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, the second coming, shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, unless this happened in 70 AD, which I say no, it didn't, there has to be a future temple built. Because he's going to have to oppose and exalt himself above God. He's going to have to sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Does this sound like two different events to you? It doesn't to me. I, if there's two different events here... I don't see it. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, 
that they might be saved. See, they wanted to live in unrighteousness. They didn't want, they didn't love the truth that they might be saved. They didn't want this. Verse 11. Pretty strong words here. And for this cause, God, not Satan, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we, not them, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. What? That sounds like Calvinism to me. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. Does that sound like two different events to you, or does that sound like one continuous thought process? It sounds like one continuous thing to me. Do you know the Schofield Reference Bible says that this, where it says day of Christ, it should say the day of the Lord? It says it's a mistake, and he corrects it. Yeah. The scholars that worked on the King James Bible that could read Greek and Hebrew in addition to knowing English, uh, he says he's smarter than all of them combined. I don't think so. Take a look at the uh, life of Schofield, who gave us, popularized the pre-trib rapture and dispensational theology. According to his two daughters, he abandoned his children, he abandoned his wife, never sent them any support, and swindled his mother-in-law out of her life savings. And when he made hundreds of thousands of dollars on the sales of his Bibles, he never repaid her back. He never gave, both his daughters say he never gave them a penny's worth of support. Never. And the Bible calls somebody that doesn't provide for his own family, they said they're worse, they've denied the faith and they're worse than an infidel. And you want to read Schofield Bible and his notes and believe them? Really? Maybe that's why God says he's going to send them strong delusion that they would believe a lie. So, what can I tell you? So, if you uh, still want to believe that the day of the Lord uh, and the day of Christ is, well, if you want to believe that the day of Christ, that Christ is not the Lord, and the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is two different things, well, that's up to you. You can believe whatever you want. But uh, as for me, I'm just going to believe what the Bible says. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to him in his name. Amen.